Today we're in Texas and we're doing something I've never done before. These are angles, uh, a type of piton, that are pounded into holes in the rock or there's holes drilled and then they're pounded in. And today we're going to see if we can remove them. An angle is a type of piton, um, so I'm going to treat this like removing a piton, even though it's going to have more contact with the rock because it's in a hole drilled into the rock. So what I'm going to bring is a hammer to loosen it up. This is what we had. Uh, this cat's paw device um, to pry some. Pliers are always helpful. This is a chenard angle. And I, I think this is one of the, the bigger sizes. This is not quite as big as a bong, but it's starting to, to look like a bong. Well, uh, it's, it's the sound they make when you pound uh. them in. Bong, bong, bong. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it was a drug thing, but I, I think it has more to do with the sound. First is try to loosen it up, and then we'll try to get it to come out. That was about 30 seconds of pounding. Let's see if we can pull it out. Uh, <laughs> that's not amazing. Um, that, that's, that's actually pretty scary. Um, and it was kind of pounded up into the rock. Uh, so kind of pulling down and out, not great. Jim, this was in an existing hole. Like it wasn't drilled. This is my friend, Mark. Uh, he is hanging out with me filming today. Literally. And we are going to make him remove this very interesting piton that we found in this crack. Is it a piton? Uh, it's used as a piton. We'll, we'll show you what we're talking about. Yeah, buddy. Whoa, that's Victory. so cool. Like it's, oh, what is that? Ooh. Like I was thinking it was just a railroad spike, but there's all sorts of cuts in there. It like, it looks like it was forged at some level. They cut some off to make it one ounce lighter. Uh, probably. And, and the, the bottom looks way more blade like than a railroad spike. That's wild. Wood whip? <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. No, it fits. Just yeah, wow, yeah. actually. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean that that is that is a new one on me. This is a drilled angle. Um what they do for the first little bit, I believe they use a, a half inch uh drill bit, and then the last bit is a three eighths drill bit, and then it's just an interference fit. They like pound it in until it, it bottoms out. I've seen these used a lot in desert sandstone. Uh, I've climbed on them around Moab. In really soft rock, um, at the time, they're, they were a pretty good option. Um, Glue-ins uh, are quite a bit better, but in really soft rock, mechanical bolts aren't great. <laughs> well, that this may be part of the piece. Man, I hate these type of carabiners. Look at how sharp that is. spent about five minutes working on this and uh, no movement um, so this piece as is uh, super strong I would whip on it um, but you don't know that until you start messing with it 
and it is only going to get worse and more rusty from here. So we are going to um, continue trying to get it out and put in a big glue in in its place. Our next strategy is what I call redneck core drilling. So I'm going to drill a bunch of small holes around this piece and hopefully that will allow space for it to get loose and then we'll pull it out. clear ringing note is what you want to hear on a piton. It's not what you want to hear when you're trying to get one to come out. Oh, I'm making progress. I see you moving. Getting this on film, there we go. This may be the softest stuff I ever bolted. It feels to me like I'm knocking off more rock as I'm brushing, and this is just like a nylon brush. Let's blow it out a couple more times and see if that's the case. So we got a, a gift from our local guide here from up top. Apparently these are the tools you're supposed to use in this rock. I've been very spoiled with the granite I've been bolting in recently. Yeah, I'm, I'm creating a larger hole with the brush, which is fine because it's a glue in. So you might be thinking, that's a really big hole. What's going to go in that? This is one of the biggest and strongest glue ends on the market. They make ones bigger here, but we haven't found any that are stronger. When we tried to break these, we actually had to find a special shackle that had a pin that was small enough to fit in here, but was strong enough to um, make this bolt fail. Oh, I'm ready for the glue. Hey, this is really nice. You can like see all the way to the back of the hole. The hole is ginormous. It's, it's full all the way back there. You wouldn't be able to do this on a, a normal bolt, but since that hole is so large, I can just uh, top it off. Make sure you wear gloves when you're doing this. Is this a message to always be prepared to uh, bolt a route? Yeah, even when you're traveling in a, the flattest state that you can think of. You never know who's going to reach out and say, hey, come help me. <laughs> we actually are in Texas, and my friend Jim Day was nice enough to reach out and show us some of these areas uh, that were forgotten or overlooked that he has been working to develop and revive. If you are in the DFW area and interested in helping, you can find Jim on Mountain Project and his social medias. This is a Chenard Piton, which our friend Doug Robinson definitely made and fabricated pitons and bonds. So that would be wild if this was something that he had his hands on 40 or 50 years ago and 
we just pull it out of a rock in Texas.